All right, guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. So good to be with you guys. Um, these are some of the uh, most enjoyable videos that I put out through the channel. They're probably some of the most popular and the most entertaining as well. But I want to set a little bit of framework around my top stock picks going into March here. Um, I usually split these up over three different categories. This is going to be of the dividend variety. Um, I usually come out with, with a growth and then a, a kind of a top tier stock um, basket that you could kind of buy and own forever. Um, so this is going to be kind of the dividend value side of the house, that of which there's a lot of value being uh, created right now in the market with the recent downturn. I just want you to guys to understand, I do a lot of research before making this 10 minute video or, or sometimes a little longer, um, but you're going to want to stick around through the totality. The whole idea here is that I'm looking at a lot of different metrics and I have a few that are my favorite, okay? Fair market value. So I'm looking to kind of ascertain whether or not these companies, if you don't end up doing your own due diligence, which is what I say all the time, that you could kind of trip and fall into some of these companies and, and be okay for doing so. I also want to premise that the vast majorities, if not all of these, I do own minus one, and I will uh, highlight that for you guys. But the one that I don't own, I'm actually looking at taking a position in myself. So this is kind of a put your money where your mouth is type of a thing. I've got 12 stock picks going into March that look really, really attractive. And then I always throw in a baker's dozen bonus for you guys. So you're going to want to stick around uh, as we roll out these stock picks for March. All right, guys, very good. So let's jump right into it. And I do want to set some framework. I'm looking at fair market value uh, price to where the market has an implied value attached to it again. So there is uh, some nice upside potential here. I'm also looking at EBITDA revenue over the next five year estimates as well as cash flow. Uh, estimates going into the future. Okay. So these are value plays that you can pick up now, sit on the fat dividend for a while and watch these grow long term. Okay. So these are not stock picks that you're going to want to enter into with the expectation that they're going to go up 20% in March. Okay. If that's what you're after, you can go somewhere else. Okay. These are good established businesses that I have looked at and run through my filters. Uh, in an attempt to provide you the very best value on where I see those pockets uh, uh, of value across all sectors. I really try to earmark the best uh, areas of pockets of value uh, in the stock market. Um, and these are the companies that rose right to the top. The first I own, Bristol Myers Squibb. I own a, a fairly large position, actually. Um, current market price at 61.33 on the dip has a fair market uh, value of eighty dollars uh, a share. Um, fantastic business. Okay, it's one of my top healthcare picks to to buy and own forever. Um, this is one that I've been excited to increase my position on, and we'll continue to own that long. Nice 3% dividend for you guys that are looking for a value play, looking to put some exposure to work in healthcare. Bristol Myers can supplement some of the other great healthcare names that are out there on the landscape right now. But Bristol Myers was the number one pick that made the list going into March. Number two in the Staples category. One of those stocks that you can buy and own forever. Um, this is one that I feature all the time. It's one that I buy and I own, and I'm glad to own it. I don't think about it very often, uh, and that is Procter & Gamble. Right now, trading at 124, providing you a nice entry into the stock here. On the technical side, yes, but from a fair market value assessment, Procter & Gamble is an absolute juggernaut, guys. This is a no-brainer. This is like shooting fish in a bar barrel. 147 on the fair market value. Checked all the boxes as far as projected revenues going forward. You want to talk about a company with a moat? Procter & Gamble has that. Products that we use, love every single day going into the future. I don't see uh, Procter & Gamble going anywhere. I, I continue to see Procter & Gamble as that premier staples play in all of our lives a great great company to become a participant in again a three percent dividend yielder in the same sector i've got the next one on the list is going to surprise some people 
but Kraft Heinz food is across the board by ratings here. Fantastic company over a 4% yielder. Again, it's really, really streamlined their business and it's really put the focus and emphasis on those products that are worldwide uh, recognized products, staples that uh, go out there um, into the marketplace and they just perform well and have performed well over the decades, okay? So if you're looking to take up some exposure, grab a 4% yield to boot, Kraft Heinz food here in the mid thirties, starting to kind of make a little bit of a move here uh, is probably optimal to look at. Next in the technology space is one that I do not talk about on the channel very often. This is the one stock on the list that I do not currently own, but I'm looking at very, very, uh, very, very intently. I'm very interested in this. And the ironic part about this is I often sit back and I think, what are some companies that I want to be a participant in? What are some companies that I actually use and love, maybe even on a day-to-day -day basis? eBay fits that bill, okay? eBay is very, very interesting. It's two-pronged business. 91% of their business is in transactions, okay? I love those businesses that are established on the precedents to allow for people to come to the marketplace, enjoy the product, take a little bit off the top, and then provide customers that elite service. eBay fits the bill. The remaining uh, bottom end on their balance sheet and how they make a little bit of money is through advertising revenue, okay? About 9% of the revenue is made up of this, but the real tell with eBay is to look at the projections going for, uh, forward for free cash flow uh, up over $6 billion in free cash going into as far as 2027, which is how far ahead I look on these guys when we're looking at the trends and we're looking at the graphs eBay is going to be around. eBay, eBay is the premier dominant online sales platform. It's one that I really like, and it's kind of a contrarian play to some of these other ones, uh, but it's it's a really interesting addition to the technology sector and, and really taking advantage of that, that online uh, uh, sales presence. And, and I think that's a trend that is going to remain intact for the long term. Um, and I think eBay will get it done for you. Next on the list, this is going to be interesting because with the run-up in financials, th there was a real separation between where I found pockets of value in financials and some where I think you guys are going to be surprised. I will be taking profits this week in Bank of America. I would have done it last week, uh, but I was uh, wrapped up in a, um, a covered call contract that I had to let roll off before I sold the stock. Um, I will be taking profits in that. Uh, I did take some profits in JP Morgan Chase, okay? But the two financials that I've got on the, the list here, and you can throw travelers in here as well as being one of those insurers, kind of a, a quasi-financial play, is BlackRock. And BlackRock just trading, I think it's north, uh, just south of $700 a share. BlackRock is a juggernaut of a company and it doesn't get talked about very often. Free cash flow. If you want one of the best asset managers on the market, look no further than BlackRock. BlackRock is one that I own a small position on in the uh, dividend growth portfolio, but it's one that I may look to take a little bit larger stab on long term. Again, five years plus. BlackRock, that's one of two financials on the list here. 3% yielder. I think last time I checked, it was around seven or $8 trillion AUM assets under management with BlackRock. They own the government pension programs absolutely solid. If you were going to buy and hold one of the asset managers over the long run, BlackRock would be tops of the list. That's why it made my list. Okay. Next in technology is going to be Cisco, SCSO. This is really just more of a channeling play to grab a nice 3% yielder, uh, very diversified business, very, very good balance sheet, very well-run company. Uh, everything in way of their projections going forward met the mark in my checks and balances, uh, as well as some implied value. So again, if you tripped and fell into Cisco, uh, I wouldn't apologize for that. 
it's a company that I own leaps on one of two companies. Um, I own over 100 shares of Cisco. So relatively large for a retail investor like myself, uh, Cisco can get it done. So you want to buy some of that old technology to maybe supplement some of those larger cap companies that are kind of suffering right now, right? Apple, Microsoft, et cetera. Um, I think it's going to be short lived. Um, but I, I never apologize for owning those old tech in the in the portfolio. Cisco and IBM come to mind. IBM being another uh, undervalued company here. Uh, but F, uh, CSCO is a ticker symbol for Cisco. That's what made the list for going into March. Um, the next on the list is an interesting one, and it is Merck. In healthcare, ticker symbol MRK, 3% yielder, currently trading at about $72 a share. Um, I actually removed Pfizer from the list, okay? Now, I own both of these companies. I own Pfizer and Merck, both Dow components. Not going to apologize for either one of them, but Merck makes the list based on its low trade right now compared to its fair market estimate at around $100, uh, le less debt uh, than Pfizer. About 7% of their book is uh, made up of debt, whereas Pfizer's got about 13% of their book wrapped up in some debt right here, EBITDA revenue and uh, gross uh, uh, cash flow projections going into um, 2027 are actually more appealing with Merck. So I had to scratch Pfizer from the list, even though they both run very, very similar diversified books of businesses in different pockets of healthcare. Um, Merck made the grade and I had to scratch that in all fairness to the subscriber community. Again, I own them both. I think they're both phenomenal companies, but I had to put Merck on there to take the nod going into uh, March of 2021 here to make the list. The next is in discretionary. Uh, it is McDonald's here on a dip. You don't get very many uh, opportunities to buy this incredible Dow component. It is right behind my Amazon pick in, in discretionary. Amazon makes another list for top stocks to buy. But McDonald's in the value category, it just doesn't get any better. McDonald's is a phenomenal business, uh, franchise business uh, with a real estate nexus, huge moat, worldwide business, absolutely enormous juggernaut. It absolutely owns the fast food space, 3% yielder. What else can I say? MCV will get it done. Next will uh, be in the staples category. It's one of my favorites. It is one of my top 10 stocks you can buy and own forever. And that is Pepsi, ticker symbol PEP, 3% uh, dividend yielder. Again, with the sell-off in the market, we're looking to, to, to chip off some of these stocks that get sold off a little bit too much in the craze. Um, good companies like this will continue to dominate in their space. <laughs> so you want to look at these as opportunities in the market. And if you were ever looking to establish maybe a nice 10 share starting position in Pepsi, now's the time to do it. Go ahead and grab that dividend yield. You're good to go. And the second of the financials that I will mention here is Citigroup. Citigroup does not get talked about ever. Citigroup is actually above BlackRock in the uh, fair market estimate of around $100. Uh, it's about a 35 to 4% yielder. Last time I checked, uh, Citigroup is a diversified international and domestic uh, financial services provider. It's absolutely fantastic. And unlike the other two that get most of the attention, I own them both. But I have trimmed back on JP Morgan. Uh, and I will be liquidating Bank of America outright to make some room for a little bit larger a position in BlackRock. But Citigroup here with the um, uh, the latest sell-off got drugged down just a little bit here. Um, you could look to take a nice little strategic pocket in Citigroup. Um, whereas again, everybody's looking at Wells Fargo on a comeback. Wells Fargo is actually overvalued right here. Okay, so it, it's, iron, it's ironic the different pockets in financials where you've had a few runaway names like JP Morgan and Bank of America, both up 20% respectively. Um, it, it, it's sometimes easy to miss some of these other pockets of value here. Uh, Citigroup will get it done. Next is Medtronic. Uh, one of those dividend aristocrats, 3%, 2.5% yielder anyway on Medtronic. It's an area of uh, surgical robotics still in the healthcare space, um, but it's been one of my favorites. I do own it in the dividend growth portfolio. 
glad to own it. Fantastic name in healthcare. You want to make sure that you're putting a lot of emphasis on those top end uh, sectors and healthcare is number two on my list right behind technology as really being those dominant, super important um, uh, areas of the stock market. So you really want to look across the board at a lot of these names, UNH, Medtronic, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Johnson & Johnson, Thermo Fisher, okay, some of these excellent companies, if you're looking to establish a dividend growth and a single stock uh, allocation to healthcare, these are the names that are going to get it done for you. Finally, on my list of 12 is my absolute favorite going into March. I've just recently upped my position in Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin is a no-brainer. What else can I say? 3% yielder, fantastic business, fantastic balance sheet, across the board increases in all of their segments, multiple segments of business, government contracts, et cetera. Um, Lockheed Martin is fantastic here on the entry. It really got pulled down with the market. It had already been on kind of a downtrend a little bit. And I think entering into Lockheed Martin, you'd be you'd be safe and at 330 a stock uh, for the share price here with an implied value of up over $400. And the bonus pick I'll throw out there for the group, I always do this, to round out the baker's dozen uh, is ticker symbol T, AT&T, and telecoms. I didn't have anything else in the space. Fair market value here puts it up over $32, trading at around 27 and a half here um, on the recent pullback and downgrade as well of AT&T. Um, I own a big position in AT&T, but if you're going to fill up that telecom space, with the Disney's and the Verizon's and the T-Mobile's of the world, why not just go ahead and take a little dab and pick up the six and a half percent yield to boot? Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the message, man. I want to subscribe to the channel, share the message with folks out there, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Guys, thanks again for tuning into this top stock picks going into March and good luck in your investment future.